Pastor Evan Mawarere was at the forefront of calls for stayaways in Zimbabwe. He started the online movement This Flag in April in protest against deteriorating social and economic conditions in that country. It's a fight that's got him arrested, but he's made it out of prison. He joins us now to discuss this further. Pastor, good afternoon to you. Very good to have you with us in person today. Thank you, Thank you so much for having me today. It, you know, it, it's obviously been a roller coaster ride for you in and out of prison, in and out of court in the space of a week or so. What has has the last week been like for you? I think the last week has been something that you would have had to convince me of in terms of it would ever have happened to me. But more than anything else, it is testament to the, to the fact that the time has come for the citizens of Zimbabwe to take back the destiny of their own nation. There's no doubt about that. What was it that, that forced you, compelled you to put yourself forward as you're now being branded really as, as the leader of this movement, even though you don't perhaps really see yourself that way, but you are the icon of this movement. What made you put yourself forward? I think what made me put myself forward was the fact that this country is a country that for me was promised to me by my parents and all my friends shared the same sentiment that our parents promised us a peaceful and prosperous life which we have not been able to see and so our gripe is to say where is the promise that this flag makes for me where is the 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 prosperity that this flag makes for me and our concern is that we have become adults in our own country and the children that we are bearing seem to have no future in this country that we all love so much and so because of that i've had to make a decision to say i, I can i cannot justify my silence anymore i would rather be incarcerated than keep quiet at least i've done something about it when you were incarcerated last week, your lawyer himself told us he could not guarantee your safety. And we know that it's a regime that has tortured people in prison before, including opposition leaders. Were you not afraid for your own safety in, in prison? I, I definitely was afraid for my, for my own safety in prison. But something amazing happened in that prison cell because I met young men who were also incarcerated. And these are citizens of Zimbabwe. And as we sat around this cell, which is dark, we shared stories of what landed us in prison. Many of them confessed to me that the crimes they had committed were indeed genuine and they all looked at me and they said to me big brother we don't want to be here what do we do to get out of here why has our nation abandoned us like this and so I found safety in comrades even in prison where we shared our stories and again that for me the cry of Zimbabweans is that all we want is a country that works is a country that we can be proud of wherever we go. We are tired of being embarrassed of our own country. We are tired of running away from our own country. Yesterday was Nelson Mandela Day here in South Africa. I spent the day on the streets looking for Zimbabweans and talking to them. And all of them say the same thing. Is there a way for us to one day come back home? Because we long to be in the land that we love. What, what are you advocating for as part of this movement? Do you want regime change in your country? I think what we're advocating for more than anything else is a government that respects the dignity of its citizens. And I think even though the citizens now collectively are getting to a place where we are saying we want change in governance, we know that we are going to have to exercise this right in the upcoming elections. But until then, our government owes us a land that we can live in peacefully, prosperously, with access to health, with access to all the things that you know, make up for a, a, a you know, good life. So we've been asking them, would you hold on some of the policies because they are hostile towards the citizens? Would you deal with corruption within the ranks of government because it's destroying the future of our children? Can you demonstrate to us that you abhor corruption by arresting or firing and bringing to justice top officials who are known to be be corrupt. Do you believe that ZANU-PF is the government that can deliver what you've asked for? I think they've proved to us over the last couple of years that it is a very difficult task for them to deliver those things. And so part of what I'm advocating for as a young person, and I do so openly, is the fact that it is time for new ideas to enter the political fray of our country. There's no doubt about the fact that we have recycled the same people and the same ideas for a long time. And it's time for us to think differently. Why can the elders of my country not become advisors to young people who can 
can take our country into a place that they dreamed about, the elders dreamed about a Zimbabwe when they went to war. They've laid a foundation. Why can't all of them, from both sides of the political divide, take a back seat and say, we're going to become your counselors. We're going to allow you with the energy and ideas you have to take this country forward for yourself and for your children. And for me, that's the wish that I have for ZANU-PF and for all opposition parties to realize that it's time for a new generation to build a better Zimbabwe. Uh, President Robert Mugabe says you don't belong in Zimbabwe and he's accused you of having foreign backers who are driving this campaign. Joanne, nothing hurts me more than hearing a statement like that because nobody loves Zimbabwe more than a Zimbabwean. And it's been proved over the last couple of weeks by the millions across the world and in our own country who have stood up to say we need a better Zimbabwe. I don't need anyone to come from the outside of Zimbabwe to come and give me money or tell me in my ear that I'm failing to raise funds to put my kids through school or that I can't uh, get access to health or that I'm hungry. I know that. It's a reality that I live with. I've said this before, I'll say it now. That statement is a sign that our own government is far removed from the reality of the everyday citizens in Zimbabwe. You seem to pride yourself on the fact that this campaign uh, is apolitical, and yet we're starting to see opposition parties either jump on the bandwagon or try and hijack this project. Is that likely to happen, that it'll be taken over by the opposition? I think it's going to be difficult to take this over because it belongs to the citizens. And the, what we have encouraged citizens to do is to say, no matter what your political background is or what your racial uh, you know, uh, profiling is, Zimbabwe now has to come first in your heart. And so even when you then go back into your political affiliation, you know that if the leader of your political party does not put this country first, then you can hold them to account. You can feel free to even abandon them. And so I think for me, the beauty is in the fact that the citizenry now has occupied a space that looks at every political party and says, if you desire to be the leader in, Z in Zimbabwe, be informed that the citizens will not let you do as you please. We will always hold you to account. The problem is people are wondering what your plan is from here. You've managed to, to rally people to, to come on board, to participate in this campaign, but there isn't a structure as such in mm -hmm. your movement. How are you going to take it forward and what do you plan to execute? I think the beauty of this flag movement is that it doesn't find leadership in Ivan Mawarire. This flag finds its leadership in the citizens of Zimbabwe. It's in the hearts of people. That's why if you arrest Ivan Mawariri or God forbid should you kill him, you don't, you don't shut the movement down. It only grows stronger. It's an idea that lives within the hearts of people. Zimbabweans had the idea of this flag long before I came. I came up and expressed a sentiment and everybody said this is the time that I now want to express that which I felt for a long time. So even though there are no structures, the citizens are now convinced in terms of what they want. The first thing that citizens want is unity. We have been divided by the politics of our country for a very long time and now we are saying not anymore. We now know that we want to be first of all united and secondly, we now know that the interest of the citizens come first. So in terms of going forward, one of the things that we are looking at is saying the elections are coming up in 2018 and constitutionally that's our chance to be able to make the changes that we want to make. Let's begin to band together now. Let's teach each other how to vote, voter registration, protecting the vote, checking the voter roll. Let's also begin as a voice, begin to call on our international friends to come and help us. But, but, but can I, can I interrupt there and mm -hmm. say, you've tried the vote before. It's alleged the vote was stolen, mm -hmm. and, and that's what's widely believed by many observers. However, so it, it's proven the vote has not worked for you, worked for you in the past, that the, the ballot box has failed you in some ways. You're absolutely right. I think one of the things that I hold dear, and that is a value of the This Flag movement, is values like nonviolence. We cannot solve the situation in Zimbabwe with violence. If we fight violence with violence, we beget violence. And so we must find m ways and means that are peaceful, that are constitutional and that are lawful. And I think over the last couple of weeks, we have proved it that we can stand together as a citizenry. These coming elections in 2018, mark my words, Joe, are going to be extremely different. There is a new player, a new hero has entered this fray. 
And that hero is called the citizen. And we're calling, one of the things we're calling for is for all political parties to begin to identify a new blood. Listen, we can't recycle the same things over and over again and expect a new, a different result. We have a chance to do something new. People that don't, don't have a checkered past, we thank those that have held fought for us in terms of activism, in terms of opposition. But now be, be statesman enough to set up a new generation and say, let's support this. And I think the citizenry is beginning to rally now behind some of these new faces and new movements that are coming up. And it's an exciting season for us. Thank you very much for coming into studio Thank to talk you. to us Thank today. You for Pastor me. Evan Mawarira, he is the founder of This Flag in Zimbabwe.